Welcome. This video is going to look at the other common reaction of alkanes, and that is with a halogen. And the process is called halogenation, and it's a unique process because it requires several steps or reaction mechanism to happen, and it requires special conditions. And according to your IB syllabus, you have to be able to explain the mechanism, but I don't know that you have to be able to provide the reactions. So we're going to go through this. I'm going to try and make it as clear as possible to you as far as what's going on. But um, it is by far one of the more complicated equations to follow, especially if you have to supply the reactions. So because alkenes are saturated, they only undergo substitution reaction, which means an incoming species has to knock off one or more hydrogen atoms to take its place, or even break apart the carbon backbone. So halogen molecules do this in a unique reaction called halogenation. So for example, methane and chlorine molecules can combine overall to form CH3Cl and HCl. So what you can see has happened is one hydrogen is broken off the methane, and replaced by a chlorine, and then the other chlorine pairs up with that hydrogen that was released to form the HCl. But the whole process is actually far more complicated than this. First of all, the halogen molecule will only split in the presence of UV light because alkanes are extremely stable, remember, very low reactivity. So UV light is required to split the halogen apart, and when you split chlorine apart into two chlorine atoms, they each have seven electrons. So neither one is stable, and neither one has a charge. They're simply very reactive single atoms, and these are called free radicals, and you maybe have heard the term free radical before because they're highly reactive atoms, so they're going to bond with the first thing they find, and um, free radicals are thought to be part of the disease mechanism, such as cancer, um, that we don't quite understand yet. But this process is called photochemical homolytic fission. Photochemical meaning light needed to start the to start the reaction. And then homolytic means breaking apart two of the same atoms, so a diatomic chlorine. And then fission, um, again, means splitting apart. So the homolytic and fission is a little bit redundant there. But this step then starts the reaction mechanism and it includes three kinds of reactions or steps. This first step is called initiation because you have to initiate or create some free radicals to get this process going. The second step is called propagation where the free radicals continue to produce more free radicals and keep the process going. And then there's a termination step where the free radicals end up getting eliminated. They end up bonded back into stable molecules, so it terminates this so-called chain reaction that's going on. So again, even though the overall equation looks simple enough, methane and chlorine combine to form this halogenoalkane and hydrochloric acid, again the process is much more complicated than that. So let's take a closer look at it. First of all, what's a chain reaction? It means the initiation step creates these free radicals, that can trigger or start a variety of different reactions with different products. But the one thing that all these reactions have in common is they create another free radical. So a halogenoalkane is just one of the possible end products you can end up with from this, free, from this uh, chain reaction. So the free radicals can bond with an alkane, but like I said, they also produce another free radical. So this is called propagation because it both uses and produces a free radical, which keeps the reaction going. So if it's a reaction with positive products, that's great to have the free radicals um, continuing the reaction. But free radicals are generally not good things to have because they've been known to be linked to cancer, to aging. This was the whole issue with the ozone destruction, which you may or may not be old enough to remember about. But uh, putting all these chlorine molecules up in the atmosphere did a lot of damage. So then termination is the third and final step where it's a reaction that eliminates the free radical, thus ending the chain reaction. So again, we have to have initiation where UV light splits apart a halogen molecule to create the free radicals, as shown here. And then each halogen atom becomes a free radical, so one molecule gives you two free radicals. Um, again, make sure you realize that the chlorine with the little dot next to it is just showing there's seven electrons. Six are paired, so we don't show theirs, and there's that one unpaired electron making it very reactive. But it's not an ion. There's not a charge on it. This is an, um, a neutral atom, but a very unstable atom. So 
Next step is after the initiation, the propagation occurs. And what I've shown you here is I've just clipped the four reactions, the four propagation reactions that the book happened to give. This is by no means all of the reactions that could happen. But what you notice in each case is there's a free radical as a reactant, and there's still a free radical as a product. It's a different free radical, but it's a free radical that will continue this highly reactive process going on. And then termination is when two free radicals get together. So if two chlorine free radicals get back together, they just reform the chlorine and the net effect is nothing. Um, but you can also end up with CH3 forming another halogeno alkane. Um, you can end up forming C2H6. So there's a variety of things that variety of products and can, that can end up resulting from this. And as I said, the halogeno alkane is just one possibility. So before I talk about testing for an alkane versus an alkene, just to sum up, the whole process is that there's an initiation that creates the free radical that requires UV light. The propagation is when one free radical produces another free radical and keeps this chain reaction going. And then termination is when two free radicals get together and they're taken out of this propagation step. That's kind of the big picture. So testing for alkenes versus alkenes. We haven't talked about alkenes yet, um, so I'll remind you of this at the end. But alkenes are saturated and have to undergo substitution reactions. But as we'll see in the next video, alkenes have a double bond, so they undergo addition reactions. The double bond opens up and an atom is added to each carbon to make it a saturated molecule. So one test for an alkene versus an alkene is to add a halogen like bromine water is an easy one. Bromine water tends to be dark brown. And alkenes will readily react with this bromine water, and you'll see it become colorless as the bromine is becomes attached to the alkene and forms um, either a halog well, forms a dihalogeno alkene. But alkanes won't react unless there's UV light around. Another easy test is the based off that whole idea of sootiness, alkenes are going to burn with more soot because of their hydrogen carbon ratio versus an alkane, which will burn much cleaner. So two really common uh, tests for an alkane versus an alkene.